Your best camera is your phone because it's always with you. Sometimes using a DSLR can be obtrusive, so using your mobile phone will be unobtrusive and very effective when capturing amazing moments in public spaces. Mobile phones over the past few years have drastically improved their image capturing capabilities. Let me know in the comments below which phone you use to capture photos. If you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button to stay notified for more videos. Also like this video if you found it helpful. Here are 10 tips and tricks to take better photos with your mobile phone. First one is clean your camera lens. You'll pretty much have your phone in your pocket and that will collect dirt, dust, throughout the day. It's better to have a microfiber cloth. You just want to make sure you clean fingerprints, dirt and dust off your phone. How you frame your image is very important to taking the best possible photos. On your phone you'll have grid lines. You want to make sure that's turned on. You want to place your subject on those intersecting lines. This is referred to as the rule of thirds. Just remember that these are just guidelines and they're not actual rules. These will just help you get the best possible image on your phone. Some more composition techniques are a symmetry, frame within a frame, leading lines. Also try using high and low angle shots. Because most photos are taken at eye level, just keep an eye out for opportunities and perspectives than what you would normally observe. Most phones have digital zooming. Doing this will drastically lower your image quality because the lens does not physically move like an optical lens. Basically, digital zooming means there are less pixels in the picture, making it blurry and pixelated. Optical zooming is when the lens physically moves to magnify the image. Some phones today will have optical zooming. You would want to download a third-party camera app for this. Third-party camera apps can give you more control over your smartphone's camera, giving you DSLR-like settings. The app will give you pro settings like changing your ISO, shutter speed, white balance, and aperture. Links to the apps that I use will be in the description below. Usually your phone will have an automatic focus. And if you're trying to get up close to a subject, it might throw your autofocus out of whack. So adjusting your focus manually will give you more control over what is going to be in focus and you can get even closer creating macro shots on your phone. Creating macro shots will give you a great depth of field if you can get your subject really close to your camera, making the background nice and blurry. You can also create a really nice effect with this called bokeh. To create this effect, you need your light source to be out of focus. This works best at night. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. What HDR will do on your phone will give you more details in the highlights and shadows so you can see what's in your shadows. Now, if you want to get more control over your image, you want to use a technique called exposure bracketing. Exposure bracketing is when you take multiple pictures, usually three, at different exposure levels, giving you more control over your high dynamic range. When you take these pictures, make sure you have a tripod so your image doesn't move, giving you a more accurate HDR. A link to the tripod that I use will be in the description below. To combine these images, you want to get another third party app. I use an app called Vibrance HDR. What this will do is combine your three pictures into one HDR image. Time-lapse videos involves taking multiple pictures over a period of time and then bringing it back into a video format. Make sure you bring out your tripod and smartphone clip. Bring a power bank because this will drain your battery. Just keep in mind you'll be waiting a while so bring a book to pass the time. If you don't have a time-lapse feature built in, there are apps to create time-lapses. These time-lapse apps will create the video for you so you don't have to import them into your video editor. Generally low light sucks on mobile phones. To fix this, you want to make sure your ISO is as low as possible at 100. And then you want to adjust your shutter to a slower shutter, which will let more light in. And you want to make sure you have a tripod. If you have a higher ISO, 
it'll introduce a lot more noise, making your low light photos look terrible. Another technique you can use is exposing to the right. You want to make sure in your app you bring up the histogram. You want to make sure that your histogram is exposed to the right, making your image brighter. And then in editing, you want to darken your photo. This will crush most of the noise, giving you a better quality photo. Avoid using your phone's flash. More light is better, but using the flash can create harsh shadows and lighting, and the flash will have a different color to the environment lighting. You're better off trying to find light sources in low light that will light up your subject than using your phone's flash. After you've taken all these photos, you want to edit them. Of course, it's your own artistic choice and you can approach the edits however you want. You can also add filters. When you edit, you don't want to over edit. You want to enhance your image in the editing process and sometimes less is more. There are many editing apps that you can put on your phone, but the one that I use is Snapseed. This will give you a lot of tools to manipulate your image. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share this with anyone that you know that could use these tips to take better photos. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos in the near future. I'll see you guys next time.